Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Salina, Kansas. We extend a warm word of welcome to those of you listening to us by way of KINA Radio, 910 AM, 107.5 FM. And to those of you who are watching us via Facebook or YouTube, we extend a warm word of welcome to you as you join all of us here in uh, this sanctuary who have gathered to worship Almighty God. This is a unique way for us to reach out in person and through the internet. But we would invite any and all who may be within the near confines of Salina to come in and join us for worship. And so with that in mind, as a people of faith, join together, whether at home or here in person, would you please stand if you are able for our opening sentences. Please join me in the call and response. We gather to worship God, who stretched the heavens like a tent and set the earth on its foundation. We gather to worship God, who rides the wind like a chariot and wears light as a garment. We gather to worship God, who suffered for the sake of our lives and offers us life unlimited. So let us worship God. Please remain standing and join us in our opening hymn, number 23, God, You Spin the Whirling Planets. Please be seated. As we come together as a people of faith, we come trusting in our God, knowing that if we can sincerely confess that which we have done that has separated us from one another and from the Almighty, we will find mercy. With that in mind, please join me in our prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Merciful and gentle God, we have wanted reward without sacrifice. We have been unwilling to serve and have not humbled ourselves in obedience. Forgive our hubris, gracious God. Correct our ignorant ways 
and help us to know your glory through servanthood. Guide us to be true followers of your way through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Know this, my friends. You are reconciled to the Almighty. You have professed your love for God through your confession. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. forward you can do so now but I don't really see anybody I would like to um, welcome anybody who's watching us any kids who are out there watching us on TV or listening to us on the radio to um, know that this is for you today um, for some people the best thing to have um, during a chicken dinner for, for kids one of the best things about a chicken dinner is the wishbone at the end and being able to um, make a wish on it. Now, I always thought the turkey bones were, the turkey wish bones were a lot better than <laughs> the chicken bones, but they were a little more sturdy. But anyway, we you would both, and I have a kid, a picture for the kids, but I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it on the camera. If you, I'm not sure how common it is to use the wishbone, but if you, um, if you were to, um, you just put, each of you pull, put your hands on there and you pull them apart and whoever gets the largest piece, their wish comes true. Now, have you ever wished for something? I remember that when I was a young um, child, probably in the elementary grades, I used, we used to watch a commercial for Juicy Fruit Gum and the gum would grow on the trees and I thought that would be the neatest thing, and I don't know how many times I wished that juicy fruit grew on trees. But now I think about that wish, and I think how awful that would have been if it really did grow on trees. For one, I had a habit of swallowing juicy fruit gum when I was young, so I would have swallowed a lot of it, and that probably wouldn't be good for me. And two, we probably would have littered up the country with all the wrappings and stuff that is contained in a pack of juicy fruit gum. Sometimes we make a wish without thinking about what would happen, and that's kind of what I did. James and John were two brothers who were disciples of Jesus. One day, the two of them came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus replied. In your glorious kingdom, we want to sit in places of honor next to you, one at your right and one at your left. You see, they thought Jesus was going to set up an earthly kingdom, and they wanted to sit beside him on the throne. They wanted to share in his glory and greatness. Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. Then he explained that whoever wants to be great must be a servant to all. And he told them that for even I, the
Please pray with me. O oh God, your word gives us counsel for our understanding. Enable us to receive it today. In the name of your Son, our Lord, amen. The first scripture reading comes from, from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Every high priest is appointed to help others by offering gifts and sacrifices to God because of their sins. A high priest has weaknesses of his own, and he feels sorry for foolish and sinful people. That is why he must offer sacrifices for his own sins and for the sins of others. But no one can have the honor of being a high priest simply by wanting to be one. Only God can choose a priest, and God is the one who chose Aaron. That is how it was with Christ. He became a high priest, but not just because he wanted the honor of being one. It was God who told him, You are my son, because today I have become your father. In another place, God says, You are a priest forever, just like Melchizedek. God had the power to save Jesus from death, and while Jesus was on earth, he begged God with loud crying and tears to save him. He truly worshiped God, and God listened to his prayers. Jesus is God's own son, but still he had to suffer before he could learn what it really means to obey God. Suffering made Jesus perfect, and now he can save forever all who obey him. This is because God chose him to be a high priest like Melchizedek. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Thank you very much, Mackenzie. And now let us enjoy the word shared with us through the anthem of this morning. <laughs> Yeah. 
And now our second reading comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 35. As with the first reading, I remind you again that this is the Word of God as it speaks to you. For we read, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, will you do us a favor? Jesus asked them what they wanted, and they answered, When you come into your glory, please let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left side. Jesus told them, You don't really know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the cup that I must drink from? Or be baptized as I must be baptized? Yes, we are, James and John answered. Then Jesus replied, You certainly will drink from the cup from which I must drink. And you will be baptized just as I must. But it isn't for me to say who will sit at my right side or at my left. That is for God to decide. When the ten other disciples heard this, they were angry with James and John. But Jesus called the disciples together and said, Thank you. 
congregation for this world. And what was hard for some of us to fully understand, this is disciple leadership. As I said earlier, this is a unique way of thinking, of seeing leadership form itself. And it's gone.
When you lead with love, you motivate people beyond their fullest potential. You see, Jesus knew and knows the power of love. And leadership needs to be aware of that very fact. So to be a leader, you need to paint a vision. A vision that is centered in love and seeks to provide service. A vision lived out in treating people with respect, compassion, grace, and love. Now, yes, the Green Bay Packers lost that championship game because their leader was locked out of the stadium. But that's a word of warning for us. For the church of Jesus Christ, we better not lock Christ out, ignoring his invitation to follow him. For if we do that, we have faith in seeing his vision. And that's certainly not what we want to see happen, is it? In the name of the risen one, creator, redeemer, and spirit. Amen. 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 And now, if you would please join me in affirming that faith, would you please rise as we join together in this portion of our confession? Saying together, God has created the people of the earth to be one of the universe's family. The being has been of the law, he overcomes the barriers between brothers and sisters and breaks down every form of discrimination based on racial or ethnic differences, real or imaginary. The church is for all, and all humanity to receive.
Please be seated. Today I bring your attention to the announcements that are in the bulletin. Please make note of all of them. And if there's any that you would like to learn more about, you're more than welcome to call the church office. But I'd like to highlight just a few. Today at 11.15, right after the worship service in the conference room, we're having a discussion on Follow Me, an adult discussion, and all are welcome to attend that. Also, please note the community coat drive that we are hosting with Sunrise Presbyterian Church this coming Saturday. Please note that. And if you would like to participate in helping out, uh, please speak to Marty Mills, who is uh, overseeing that from our congregation's side. And please keep in your thoughts and your prayers over these next, this next year at least, if not longer, our young adult volunteer, Teresa Cooper, who is in Dundee, Scotland, working at a congregation of the Church of Scotland on behalf of you, this congregation, and the Presbyterian Church USA. As we move into prayer now, I know each of you have petitions that are deep within your own hearts and souls. So at certain moments, we will have a moment of silence so you may lift up those particular prayers of your own. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you are our high priest who offered yourself for us with your prayers and tears, your very body. Help us to pray and offer supplication for ourselves and for our community. We pray for the local, national, and global church that it might exhibit the way of service in faith and love. We pray for the international community that it might learn the way of peace. We pray for anyone who suffers. Help us to be the healing presence that you give to us. We pray for the earth, asking that we be proper stewards of your creation. We remember those who have come to their eternal rest and we wrap our loving arms of comfort around those who grieve. We lift up in silence prayers that are within our own hearts for we know you will hear us. Mighty God, we ask all these things in the name of the one you sent to us, that servant priest, Jesus of Nazareth, who also taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The ministry and mission you support through First Presbyterian Church touches so many people and can be life-changing. You can give in a variety of ways by placing your offering in the offering plates at the back of the sanctuary or by following the instructions in your bulletins for sending in your offerings via mail, text message, website, or the Realm app. 
God is ever faithful and has blessed us with so much. With gratitude, let us offer back to God what we have with love and thanksgiving. God, we offer you these gifts. Multiply them so that they might help build your kingdom on earth and be of service to the body of Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing and let us now sing our sending hymn on page 215, What Wondrous Love Is This?
as we leave here today, we go out knowing what the vision is for us to follow, what the vision is for us to live out. For as we do that, we are always being reminded that we do it not alone, but we do it with brothers and sisters in the faith. So as you go out today, in service to one and to all, go out knowing that you go with the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Go in peace. Shalom. Thank you.